Hi, today we're going to talk about Hot Shots. This is a game about wildfires, fires in forests, and Hot Shots is in the specialty team, the first firefighters that come into the center of uh, the disaster, trying to contain the fire, trying to uh, put out the fires before too many uh, areas are scorched and the forest is lost. This is an extremely interesting, different, and I would say um, uh, surprisingly uh, away from what we have used so far, theme-wise, game that uh, packs a uh, simple gameplay, simple rule set, but a lot of uh, variability, uh, a lot of uh, different replayability factors, and also has a very fun and very easy to play co-op nature. This is a co-op dice rolling game where you try to match uh, dice results on the location of the tiles that you're fighting the fire, matching uh, uh, firefighting tools essentially, uh, like hoses and uh, firefighters and uh, shovels, etc. in order and axes, trying to, um, to match the specific symbols a tile requests in order to uh, decrease the fire intensity and hopefully remove the, fire, the flame tokens from there altogether. Because essentially the goal of the game is you're trying to extinguish all the fires before either your uh, uh, campfire tile, which is your base, is burnt and scorched and then you lose the game, or eight uh, in total tiles from the forest are scorched, completely burnt, and then you again lose the game. If, that, if you manage to extinguish all the fire flame tokens before any of those two things happen, then you win the game. The game has very pleasant flow, it has all the good aspects of the co-op game, it plays extremely well uh, solo and has also a lot of different ways to increase the difficulty or decrease the difficulty accordingly and create uh, opportunities for more or less challenge as you wish and uh, do it uh, extremely difficult or extremely easy as well. Uh, it's a game that uh, uh, it packs into a small box, nice art, beautiful aesthetics, um, easy setup and nice game flow but without bombarding us with too many rules and too many details etc. It has an extremely thematic uh, uh, mechanism, an extremely thematic flow, for example even the, the way that uh, uh, the air tanker flow flies uh, you know, either in a row or in a curved line but you cannot make a, a, you know, a U-turn, makes sense because they are airplanes and that's how they fly. And other things that uh, they match also uh, the way that the fire um, changes direction by the wind and then you can start spreading on other areas and the different importance and different uh, uh, capacity for fire for different tiles. All these things pack a nice, uh, good blend and deliver a good gaming experience. So join me at the table, I'll show you how the game works in practice, explain to you all the rules and the variants etc and all the details and then we'll come back at the end of this video as we do always for some final opinions on the game. Shots is a cooperative, press your luck firefighting game in which you all win or lose together. You take on the role of a specialist, of a firefighter specialist that is, each with uh, their own ability and move to burning tiles to roll dice and match the combination of die faces, dice faces on the tile in order to suppress the fire and extinguish it. The more faces you roll, the more you reduce the fire and may even produce reward tokens that, you can help, uh, that they can help you against the blaze. If you fail to match at least three phases, the fire intensifies. You can also lay fire breaks or call in help from vehicles during the battle, and the fire grows at the end of each player's turn by the draw of a fire card. If the tile has too many flames added to it, that tile scorches and is lost forever. If eight tiles are scorched, or if the fire camp scorches, the game is over and players lose. If the players extinguish all the fires, they win. So the, object the objective of the game is very simple. Remove all the flame tokens from the board before eight tiles or the fire camp scorches and then win the game. Hot Shots is a, a very different and very interesting theme-wise game. When wildfire burns across the land, the first team sent are the Hot Shots. They're named for being sent to the hottest part of the fire. These specially trained firefighters battle the blaze in the roughest and most remote areas. You and your friends are a hotshot crew member called to fight a raging forest fire. Move to the burning areas and roll the dice to try to break back uh, the, the intensity of uh, the flame and the fire. And each area provides its own challenge and putting uh, different things under perspective from a strategic point of view. Use teamwork to press your luck, cut fire breaks and call in vehicles for support. 
the fire moves unpredictably and spreads fast. If too many areas become scorched, the forest is lost. So this is a game for one to four players from Fireside Games. It's a very simple game uh, from rules points of view, but it's very, very fun. And you can also tweak the difficulty by making it extremely uh, easy or even more difficult and challenging, depending on the, your level. Uh, it has a lot of replayability, very, very nice flow and great looking uh, components. Most of all, it has a very rigid and robust theme and the mechanisms of the game and what you do in the game makes, makes sense absolutely. So, for the game setup, first of all we shuffle all the terrain tiles and lay them out face up to create the board. Players can choose to either create a random setup or determine the location of each tile. For your first game, it is recommended for setting up a 5x5 five five circular pattern as shown in front of you. And after you're familiar with all these setups, of course you can use different type of uh, uh, formats or experiment with your own. In the rulebook, I'm just going to show you briefly, there are alternative alternate uh, tile layouts that you can use in order to have uh, different setups. But for your first game, it's better to use the one uh, suggested in the rulebook for starters. The, the second thing that you do is uh, you set the fire break and flame tokens. These are the fire break. Essentially, these are uh, remote uh, uh, roads or cut off uh, trees that uh, they create uh, safe areas between two forest tiles so the fire doesn't spread between them and you can place them at the edges of the hexes. Uh, make a pile of those, make a pile of uh, the fire tokens essentially, uh, which indicate the intensity of the fire in different uh, areas of the map. Set the reward tokens face down and create a pile. These are the reward tokens and have various things from the other side. Uh, you gain them as uh, uh, in the course of the game for uh, rolling out different faces and different uh, combinations and matching the symbols at the bottom of each tile when you fight the fire. You place the three vehicle tokens uh, on the airbase attack uh, uh, tile, which are uh, the helicopter, the airplane and uh, the vehicle. And they are for one use only. Just so that I show you a close up of those tiles. They are really, really nice. Generally everything in the game looks gorgeous from aesthetics point of view. And it packs in a small box, that's a plus. You place uh, the wind marker. This is a wind marker. It has a stand and uh, a base and you can orientate it so that you point towards the direction of uh, the wind. And it's very important because this will dictate uh, the direction to which uh, the flames uh, will uh, follow if there is a, a slight uh, breeze or a strong gust, etc. We're going to show them. You're going to see them from the top of uh, the, the camera, so it's going to be like that, but keep in mind that sideways it's going to look like that. So you take this, uh, um, uh, this uh, wind marker and you place it so that it's facing the top of uh, the tile, indicating that it's blowing towards the north, something like that. Okay, this is our um, camp tile where we start from. Uh, and we need to locate the fire camp and place it there at the top. Usually I find myself that it's very useful to not only make the direction of the wind, but also place it close to the edge of this hex so there is no confusion if someone uh, drops it or something like that. Uh, then you build the fire deck. Essentially you remove first of all the six uh, change wind direction cards, which are those. They are unique and they indicate uh, the change of direction for the winds, which affect the fires, of course. You take the rest of uh, the cards, the fire cards. They have different uh, faces, uh, different effects. We're going to explain them. These are the backs of those. The same goes for uh, the wind direction cards. They have the same back. So uh, you split the cards without excluding the wind direction change cards in two different uh, equal decks, you take three of those, shuffle them in the first portion, three more, shuffle them in the second portion, three and three, just put one at the moment, and then you put one on top of the other. So essentially, you need to put three of those in one, shuffle the bottom part, and then the remaining three, I already put one on the first half of the deck, shuffling those and putting one on top of the other, uh, securing that there is a fair spread of uh, wind direction cards in the fire deck. Keep in mind, we're going to draw one fire card at the end of each of our player turns. 
each player is going to draw one at the end of their turns. So the next thing that we do once we have created the fire deck, we place the starting fires. And now maybe it's a good uh, uh, opportunity to show you how the starting fires look like. So for example, the tiles that they, they have the starting fire flame tokens are the ones that they have this orange dot beneath the fire symbol. So the dot, this one doesn't have a dot, this one does have a dot. So what we do is we go and place two fewer flame tokens than the scorch limit included in the fire symbol. So this is a five, we need to place five minus two, three flame tokens. These are really cool, by the way. Hard plastic, nice looking tokens. And uh, we do the same for all the starting, uh, for all the starting uh, tokens where there is a fire. Again, there is an orange dot. Here we have three scorch limit, that means three minus two, one, so I just place one, as such. Next, I choose a role from the crew members, randomly. Each player gets uh, their uh, character, which has the ability described, the tile linked with the ability, which is lost if the tile is scorched and then you have to flip it without the ability side on. And then there is the order of play, move up to two tiles, fight fire and draw a fire card, which is your turn, and then go to the next player's turn. And then the dice results as a reminder on what you're going to win as a reward, if you succeed. Then you create piles uh, with the rest of the components, uh, you give the rest of uh, the die, the six dice to the fire to the first player, the player who put out a fire uh, recently, and we're ready to start. Just keep in mind that the terrain tiles are double sided. Uh, just to show you, all the terrain tiles on the back side of the tile show the scorched, destroyed, uh, fully burned side, which is a bummer. Uh, but this is this is what happens when the flame number of flame tokens reaches this number. It's different depending on the sensitivity and the criticality of each tile. Then the tile is scorched and a different sequence follows, but I'm going to explain later on. So this is a scorched side, which is lost forever. And if we have eight of those, then we lose the game. Or if we manage to, in the meantime, extinguish all the fires, then we win the game. Of course, if we have our home base uh, scorched, then we also lose the game immediately. Another important thing uh, to note is uh, the dice uh, symbols. So the dice combinations, each tile, as you see at the bottom of the tile has six symbols. It could be any combination of the symbols that they are requested. These are the tools that are requested for uh, the hotshots to put out the fire in this section of the forest. These are custom uh, dice with all these symbols. These are really nice. Uh, all tiles have those six symbols with different combination. And these are the symbols that must be rolled for the firefighting dice uh, uh, from your turn in order to fight the fire. These icons represent some of uh, the real world tools and skills hotshots need to battle the blaze at a particular tile. And the icons uh, are, this is uh, the Pulaski, if I'm pronouncing this correctly. This is a primary tool used in a wildfire. It has a steel head and combines an axe with a spade and it's good for digging and chopping. It is named after the inventor, Ed Pulaski, Pulaski a famous uh, firefighter who saved many lives during the fire in 19. 10. This is a nice piece of information to know, by the way. Uh, the second symbol is a shovel, useful for digging fire breaks. Then we have the hose, used to spray water on, fi water on fire and reduce the intensity or to create fire breaks. Then we have the chainsaw, which is uh, used to clear tree limbs, branches and brush. Then we have the MacLeod, which is this one. A special tool that combines a rake and a hoe, and it's excellent for clearing debris, created in 1905 by US Forest Service Ranger Malcolm McLeod. And then you have the firefighter, which is this symbol, and a firefighter's best asset, of course, it's their mind. Now, what about the scorch limit? You've seen, you've heard me mentioning scorch limit, which is the number in the fire symbol, this is five for this time, the scorch limit, but you can have different values like three, three or uh, four. So it's between two and five essentially. Uh, all tiles except the lake, this is the lake, have a scorch limit. And um, this is uh, the number of uh, flame tokens that uh, can go on a tile 
and uh, this is the limit actually. If uh, the number of flame tokens on the tile equals or exceeds the scorch limit, that tile is becomes scorched and we'll see what happens when this happens. It's a bad thing essentially. Some tiles have special effects that are indicated on the top of um, the tile, like this one. For example, many tiles have special effects which is indicated by uh, an icon near the top of the tile. And in some cases, the effect will be active as long as the tile is in play and another abilities will trigger only when the tile is scorched. We'll see what happens. Uh, but you can see them here, the plus in the triangle, which gives support essentially in all the other adjacent tiles. The order of play, coming back to the card. The order of play is very simple. On your turn, uh, essentially, each player, what they do, is they have, they have three phases that they're going to execute in order. First, they move up to two tiles, which is not mandatory, you can stay and put. Then you fight fire, we'll see how this goes, and then you throw a fire card to see how the fire intensifies and where it spreads. Let's see a couple of things about each of the phases. First of all, the first phase, which is move up to two tiles. You're not required to move. You have your standee, starting from your base, uh, matching the icon on your character card. Uh, you cannot move through a tile that is on fire. So if I wanted to move up to two here, I cannot go one, two, so I cannot pass through a burning tile, makes sense. Also, uh, if I am uh, on a tile that is burning, I can move out from the fire, so I can do one or two and go out of the fire, away from the fire. Uh, there is no limit on the number of uh, people uh, firefighters that they can be on a tile, you can have one, two, three or four, there is no limit for capacity. You cannot enter or pass through the lake, It is that's why you have the footprint with the crossed out symbol. And entering or leaving a rocky terrain tile counts as moving two tiles and would be the only movement you could make on your turn as indicated by the icon. You see it's rough terrain that, has it, that shows the tooth there, that means that you cannot start from here and go one, two, because it has two movement points, so you need to be adjacent and then make two movement point, or when you move out, just make two movement point and get out. Uh, this is uh, due to the fact that uh, it's a difficult terrain and you require additional effort to move in or move out from that terrain. So once you have finished moving, let's say I came here, then uh, I am able to continue to the next phase, which is, of course, to fight the fire. Now, uh, this is the main course of the game. Now, how do we do, we do the fight the fire uh, portion of the game? After you have finished moving, you have the option to roll dice and fight the fire on the tile that you are on. Actually, you have no reason not to do so. If uh, you end your movement on a tile that is not burning, you still have the option to roll the dice to place fire breaks because you get it as a reward for matching at least three dice and you should do so even though it was not burning. But the main focus of your effort should be the actual tiles that are on fire in order to remove the fire and win the game. If you are on the air attack base tile, which is this one, you have the option to use one of the vehicles that are still present at the air base attack and this is done instead of rolling the dice to fight the fire, so you have to make a selection. Essentially here what you can do is you can either fight the fire or uh, even if it's not burning you can roll the dice in order to create a, an opportunity to, to win the fire break or uh, you could uh, use one of those tokens as long as they are uh, available on the base and the, those are there only for one time use that once you use one of those it goes out of uh, the game into the box so that means that you will not have them there forever if you are start using them. Then, the main portion of the game again is to fight the fire. What you do is you take all your dice. Let me remove those here. Actually, this should already be here as part of the startup. So you take all your dice, you uh, shake them and you roll them and you get one uh, initial result. So um, uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to match. Let's say I moved here. You try to match those symbols with what you roll. The dice do not need to be matched in any particular order, only the number of matching symbols matters. You may set aside any number of matching dice symbols as you wish after each roll, but you must set aside at least one matching die after every roll. So if you didn't have any symbols, then you fail. Uh, you can uh, set aside one or more, and it makes sense to do so. So for example, here I rolled the firefighter that is required here, the two hoses that are required here, 
and uh, I didn't roll anything else. So I can set aside those three, keeping them, and then I can continue rolling. As long as you set aside at least one matching die, you can uh, continue uh, re-rolling the remaining dice as you wish. Once the remaining dice have been rolled, any matching dice that were set aside are now locked. So these are locked and I cannot use them again. So I continue rolling those and let's say, for example, I roll this one and I match it and then I say I stop because I don't want to push my luck or whatever, I can continue. Once the remaining dice have been rolled, you can decide if you want to stop. You may stop at any time uh, uh, before rolling the dice. You may decide if you can stop. If you roll the dice, you need to accept the result and then see if you have a success or failure or you can continue pushing. Uh, so you may stop at any time and resolve your results, but there is no rewards for uh, matching fewer than three dice. So at least uh, you know when you can start pushing your luck really. So there are two outcomes from the fighting the fire section. You can either have success or you can have failure. The more dice that match the combination, the better your battle against the fire and the greater and greater the rewards. You, I remind you that you can see again the rewards here. So if I match three dice, what I gain is I take one fire break token from the supply and place it between any side of the tile that you are on and an adjacent tile. This can be done even on tiles that are not currently burning. Fire breaks affect both tiles uh, they border. Fire breaks prevent the fire from being spread by wind. You must place a fire break when you earn it and you cannot save it for later use and you cannot place a fire break against a tile that has already been scorched and there is no reason to because a uh, fire doesn't spread across scorched uh, tiles. So if I was here and uh, let's say I match only those three symbols, I earn a fire break and I can place it either here, here or here. Uh, basing, based on the decision of the, fire, uh, of, uh, the wind. I'm thinking that I maybe place it here to prevent fire from spreading like that, unless you have a wind change direction. If you match four dice, so if I match four dice, the reward is that I, I remove one flame token, take it out, uh, and I finish my turn. If I match four, uh, five dice, so five out of six are a match, then I remove two flame tokens from the tile that is burning, as long as they are on and you have them. And uh, you have the ability to either place one fire break with the same rules, or so you can either place one fire break or take one reward token from the reward token pile. And this, you keep it in front of you, will explain how those uh, these work. You can have a limit of three. Uh, uh, on, on your possession in front of you next to your card okay and um, if you match all six dice so here is a six out of six then i remove three flame tokens that's the best that i can fight the fire i remove three flame tokens and i get both uh, um, a fire break token and a reward tile so that's the best I can get in terms of matching the results and rewards. So uh, these are the things that you can gain. If your success would allow you to remove more flame tokens that, uh, than there are on the tile, you just remove all flame tokens that you have and any extra are lost. And you may choose to take a lesser reward instead of one that you rolled. For example, placing a fire break instead of removing a flame token, even if you matched four dice, depending on your strategy that you set. Now this is uh, the good scenario that you managed to have a success. Of course, you can have a failure. If you roll, for example, if I was like that and I rolled something other than the chainsaw, then I cannot match the si any symbol. I have already locked those. I cannot match any symbol, the last one, which was, uh, why did I want to chainsaw? Sorry, I wanted to, uh, <laughs> it's like that, yeah. So let's say that I had the shovel No, I was checking this one, sorry. Two hoses, one uh, axe, one firefighter, and two chainsaw. That's why I wanted chainsaw. Okay, I'm getting blind. Cool. So if I rolled something other than the chainsaw, then it's a failure, for example. But the failure can happen even at the beginning of your turn, not necessarily at the end, but it's more probable to happen at the end. 
If you roll the dice and you are not able to match at least one symbol on the combination, even after using your character ability or a token, we'll come back to that, you have failed to contain the fire and you cause a blow up. What is a blow up? You set aside all the dice. Let's say the fire was burning like that and I had a failure. I set aside all the dice. I add one flame token in the area that I failed. That's the result of the uh, blow up. Blow up. Um, and if I, for some reason, equal or succeed the scorch limit, then I have scorched the tile and then I continue to what happens when you scorch the tile. We'll explain it later. And then I end my fight in the fire phase. That's a real bad turn. But those can happen. What about the support that you have? Fighting the fire alone is difficult. Working as a team will increase your odds of success. So for every firefighter you have in the tile that you are fighting, the fire, you gain one support. Each support for every additional uh, unit beside myself, uh, friendly firefighter supporting. So I earn one support. Each support allows you to avoid one blow up when you fail to match at least one symbol on your roll of the dice. You gain one support while fighting the fire on any tile that is adjacent to the lake tile. So all of these tiles that are adjacent to the tile, that's why you have these icons, have already one support. That means that if I was fighting the fire here, I have one support from the lake and one support from this firefighter because uh, the support is uh, added essentially and is accumulating. Uh, so support is a, a cumulative and that means that you can be supported by multiple firefighters and the lake and the reward token if you had any, giving you multiple chances to avoid failing. Any tokens you wish to use on your turn must be played before you draw a fire card, of course. So uh, that's the fighting the fire phase. The third phase that is important to explain is the intensity of the fire, how it uh, expands that's uh, when you draw one fire card at the end of your turn. After fighting the fire, success or failure, you now draw one card from the top of the fire deck, which is here, and you resolve it. The spotter has the ability, uh, as long as uh, the lookout tower, which is this one, is not scorched, because then he loses uh, his ability, uh, because it's flipped. So the spotter has the ability to uh, draw two, two cards at this uh, phase, and uh, select one and return the other one to the top of the deck. So that's why he's called the spotter, obviously. Now, uh, fire cards will control how the fire grows and spreads. And there are several different types of fire cards that we're going to explain briefly. And you may show your card to the other players and discuss your strategy. And it's an important part of the co-op uh, portion of the game. So we have the fire increase cards. They increase the intensity of the currently burning fires, bringing tiles closer to scorching. We have single fire increase, like uh, this one. Single fire increase the fire of one currently burning tile with the scorch limit indicated. Uh, it will be increased by two flame tokens. So do we have any currently burning token with four? Yes, we have this one. That means that we need to add two let's say for the benefit of example, because I don't want to explain scorching now, let's say it was one fire here, uh, we have with this scorch limit, four currently burning, needs to have one flame token at least on it, uh, burning, and then I increase it by two because it says plus two. So that's uh, one of the cards uh, that they work like that. You can have, uh, of course, multiple fire increase cards the fires on two different currently burning tiles with the scorch limits indicated are each increased by one flame token so uh, some multiple fire increase cards can also have the same number but in this case need to be on two different uh, threes different tiles with the number three okay so in this case i need to pick a four and five and a three a five could be this one but then i'll have a scorch so i can put a fire here and uh, a three could be supposedly this one. Okay, if I'd, I drew this card. Okay. Next, you can also have the same number, and but you can also have the lowest fire increase. The fire on one currently burning tile with the lowest scorch limit indicated is increased by one flame token. If there is a tie between tiles, the players choose one. So for this one, I need to select the lowest number. So if, for example, uh, the lowest one is was, I was like that. If the three, the only three currently burning is 
the lowest number is three, the two is not burning, then I select three and I add one fire uh, on the map uh, in the forest. So these are the cards that they increase the fire. Uh, keep in mind that uh, there are no tiles, if there are no tiles currently burning with a scorch limit indicated, no flames are added to that tile at all. If both tiles indicated on a multiple fire increase card are not currently burning, no flames are added at all. And uh, if there is more than one currently burning tile with the scorch limit indicated, players choose which tile the flame token is added to. So uh, these are the cards that intensify the fire and they increase it. Then we have the, car the win cards which affect uh, they add flame tokens to the new tiles by light breezes and strong gusts and also feed existing fires with combining winds. The direction that uh, uh, the wind spreads the fire across is indicated by the wind marker. So I'm just going to drop it for the moment like that to show you that the air is blowing in this direction. Uh, so we can either have a light breeze, which is this one. Light breeze spreads fire but is blocked by fire breaks. You add one flame token to every non-burning tile adjacent to the burning tile as indicated by the wind direction and you do not add the flame token if the tile is blocked by fire break. So for example, uh, let's focus on the upper part. For the example, forget about the bottom to give you an idea of how this works. Let's say we had this one, that one, and we had a fire break, let's say here. Okay, forget about the bottom ones because I'm not going to address them. Let's say we had only those three fires. So if we had, if we drew, we draw this uh, light breeze, that means that uh, uh, this, fi uh, this fire spreads across because there is no fire break. So you spread with a new fire there. You add one fire to the adjacent according to the direction, which is this one. And this one would normally uh, go here, but since you have a fire break, you do not add one on this location because it's protected by the fire break. And this is only when you have light breeze. When you have a strong gust uh, that spreads fire, a uh, strong gust spreads fire and is not blocked by fire breaks, you add one flame token to every non burning uh, adjacent tile to a burning tile as indicated by the fire direction and it's not blocked by fire breaks, meaning that we would add one here like we did before and in this case it would also add one here because it's a strong gust. Then you can have uh, the respective, I'm putting it below this one because they match, below this one because they match. So this is the light combining breeze. This spreads fire and adds flame to already burning tiles, but is blocked by fire breaks. You add one flame token to all tiles adjacent to a burning tile, and uh, as indicated by the wind direction, of course, but you do not add a flame token if the tile is blocked by fire breaks. That means that again, in the same example, uh, here, what we would do, we would add a fire, this would blow in here and it would add a fire, this would spread here with adding a new fire in a non-burning tile, but this would not cross here because you have a fire break. But uh, if you had a strong combining gas, which is the respective card which has the, uh, the plus icon like I had before and the strong uh, gas, then uh, that spreads fire and adds flames to already burning tiles and it's not blocked by fire breaks, you add one flame token to all tiles adjacent to the burning tile as indicated by the wind direction. So this would also add one fire here. Again, I'm only focusing here, I, I ignore this one for the example, for the benefit of the example. Wind cannot spread flames through scorched tiles. So if, uh, for example, this was scorched for any reason, okay, if this has been scorched, then you cannot uh, wind does not spread into or across uh, scorch tiles. And wind, and wind that blows off the edge of the board has no effect, of course. You can also have uh, ember cards like this one with uh, the indicated specific tile. Uh, they start or intensify fires on specific tiles due to flaming debris. You add one flame token to the tile indicated on the card, the specific tile, regardless of whether that tile is currently burning or not. And if the tile indicated has been scorched, 
and then no flame tokens are added. But this can also cause uh, a scorching effect. So this shows the propane tank, that means that uh, I would go and add one flame token here, and if it already had one, I would add the second one, and then I would create a scorch effect, because you can only have two on the propane tank, it's very, very flammable. The last cards that we are going to explain are the wind direction cards. Let me draw one from here. So you see, these are the cards with uh, the arrow and the icon on uh, the tile. So uh, when you draw one of these cards, uh, you change the direction of the wind and you cause a light breeze. That's why you have both the direction and the light breeze icon. So you resolve, first you change the direction. So this means that the direction of the air will go towards this, towards the north, if it goes before like that and you will apply a light breeze similarly like uh, before okay so these are all the cards you need to know about the wind now uh, resolving the fire cards when you resolve the fire card you add all flame tokens that result from the fire card before you check to see if the tiles uh, are scorched after resolving a fire card you place it face up in the discard pile place so once i play this card and then I make a discard pile and I place it here, next to it, okay? Uh, keep in mind that uh, players cannot go through the discard pile to see and try to remember which cards, wind direction cards uh, have been out and try to memorize cards. And if a player needs to draw a fire card and there are none available, you shuffle the discard to make a new deck. After resolving the fire deck, your turn ends and the next player uh, clockwise starts their turn. Now let's explain scorching. Anytime the number of flame tokens on a tile equals or exceeds the scorch limit shown, that tile burns to ash and becomes scorched. Tiles that become scorched, they uh, contribute to the demise of the forest and you can end up failing the game. Tiles become scorched when a player fails to contain a fire and causes a blow up or after drawing and resolving a fire card. Scorching is resolved in this order. First, let's say for example, I try to reduce the fire here and I failed. I had failure instead of success. So um, then I would add, no, uh, let's say I was like that and uh, I failed. That means that I would add one more fire so I would reach a scorch limit. So by failing, I reach with a fourth uh, flame token the scorch limit. So what I do is I take the flame tokens, I remove them, put them back in the supply. That's the first step. Then um, I flip the tile over so it shows the scorch tile, the scorch side. And I add one flame token to the adjacent tile with the lowest scorch limit that is not blocked by fire break. So three, three, four, five, three. I have here three content, uh, contents, uh, content, contents, 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 <laughs> sorry for uh, receiving the fire. It can either go here, here it doesn't go into the lake. These are the lowest numbers, three, three, and three. If there are more than one tile in equally low scorch limit, add the flame token to the tile with the least amount of flame tokens. So we immediately ignore this one. So we have that one and that one. And if there's still a, a, a tie, there's equal number of uh, tokens, then the player choose the tile that they add the flame to. So let's say I add it here strategically or whatever, or here to be closer to me in order to fight the fire. A flame token spread by scorching are added to a tile whether that tile is already burning or not. So regardless of it was already burning from scorching, you just have a flame tokens added here. Uh, you resolve the first scorch before adding flames to additional tiles and if multiple tiles receive enough flame tokens to scorch at the same time from fire card, propane tank, etc. Propane tank explodes to all the directions next to it. Uh, then uh, you resolve them in numerical order by the scorch limits of those tiles. And if there is more than one tile in the scorch limit uh, and they all have the same scorch limit number, players may choose the order in which they resolve those scorch tiles. Many tiles have special effects that trigger when they scorch. Uh, flame tokens can never be added to scorch tiles. So once they're scorched, then you don't receive any more flame tokens. Players may move through scorch tokens by crossing across uh, through their movement phase and wind cannot spread flames across uh, scorch tiles. Now, if there was a firefighter on the tile that uh, when, it's, uh, when it scorches, 
it will cause one of the dies to be locked and lost and goes back onto the base tile. The score style and spread the flame is performed as usual. The player that was on the score's limit discards one dice from the pool, placing it on um, the camp. Uh, for each firefighter that was on, on the tile. And they, when moving forward, all players roll fewer dice, which is really, really bad. In order to recover a die, and then you put your firefighter on the same position, you can put it there, it doesn't matter. Uh, in order to recover one of the lost die, or more if you have more, a player must end their turn on the fire camp tile, which is this one, our starting tile, and at the end of their turn they remove all dice and they add them back to their pool, so they have again six. This is a very, very bad situation to have less than six dice, and you need to avoid it as much as possible and as fast as possible to resolve it, so that you recover to normality. Now, characters. I already mentioned what the spotter does. The crew boss has uh, the ability one time on your turn uh, to move one uh, other player one uh, one tile so you can facilitate them moving uh, better according to your strategy and this is active as long as the uh, radio tower tile is not scorched if this is scorched then you flip it and you lose the ability the same goes with all the characters and then you have this uh, the sawyer the ability on your turn, you may turn any number of uh, Pulaski's to chainsaws and vice versa. That's really, really useful. And a similar ability is for the Swamper. They can uh, turn and see any number of uh, uh, MacLeods to shovels and vice versa, respectively. And again, if uh, the tile that is uh, linked with um, the Swamper is the supply trailer tile. And you can see that because it has an icon matching your character so if this scourges then this guy loses their ability the same goes with all four characters included in the game now uh, the reward tokens as you have seen reward tokens are gained by rolling at least four dice that match the faces on the tile you keep tokens you gain face up near your crew card until you use them or discard them all tokens are single use only you use, uh, you put your discarded uh, tokens in a face-up discard pile near the supply uh, of the rest of the things. And if a player needs to draw a token and there are none, you just reshuffle and create a new draw pile. Tokens cannot be played on the same time that they are acquired. You may have a maximum of three tokens at any time. And if you acquire a fourth one, you need to discard one before getting a new one. That's up to you, of your choice. You can play tokens only on your turn. You can play as many tokens as you have, but you must be played. They must be played before you draw a fire card. And tokens with dice icons that you can have one contribution matching a specific uh, dice that is missing. Uh, actually, uh, uh, they can be used as if you have a die with that icon shown, and it may be helpful to think them as a seventh die. Dice icon tokens can be played after rolling to prevent you from failing. And once a token with a dice icon is played, you must declare which phase is being used and then it cannot be changed, of course. Sharing tokens anytime on your turn, I, when you are on the same tile with another player, like this one, you may take and only take, you cannot give, you may take one token from the player with their permission. Tokens can only be taken on your turn and you cannot give tokens. The vehicles have a special ability, so when you go here, instead of rolling the dice, you can use the, the vehicles if they're available. Let me show you how they work. The brush rig, which is this one. Uh, you place uh, this off-road truck and uh, can spray water while driving to create fire breaks. Place three fire breaks in a continuous unbroken line between tiles anywhere on the board. And after placing fire breaks, return the brush rig token to the box. And you place your firefighter token on one of the tiles affected by either the first or the last fire break you placed. So I can say I use, I come here, I use uh, the, the brush rig, this one, I remove it from play. And then let's say I make a, it goes like boom, boom, boom. So I place driving from here to there. It needs to be on a straight or zigzag line, but it cannot be interrupted. Uh, so I drove like that and then I can place my uh, my firefighter, either at the beginning or at um, the end of either of those tiles, respectively. Then I have uh, 
The helicopter, the aircraft makes precise drops of water with high accuracy using a Bambi bucket, like in reality, uh, removes, so let's say this guy comes here, they use this one, they remove it from the game, they remove three flame tokens on a specific tile anywhere on the board, okay? So that's uh, important. So you would use it here in theory because it has already four or here, which I have again four. And uh, when I use them and I remove the flame tokens, this makes sense when you have a lot of flame tokens in one location, uh, then uh, you place your firefighter in the tile affected by the use of this vehicle. And the last one is, of course, the air tanker. This specialized airplane drops water on fire over a large area. So you remove one flame token from up to three tiles adjacent to each other anywhere on the board and uh, you place your firefighter um, on either the first or the last tile affected by the air tanker. And the air tanker, for example, it can, draw, it can uh, fly on a straight line, so boom, boom, boom. So I remove, I remove, and I remove. And then I put my firefighter either at the beginning or at the end. Uh, or it can make a, a, a curved one, so it flies like that. So I remove, I remove, and I remove, but it cannot make a triangle. So if this was burning, I cannot make remove, remove, remove. It's a fire, it's a, a firefighting aeroplane, so it cannot fly like a UFO, as you would imagine. It makes uh, thematic sense, of course. So um, there is an exception uh, to uh, all the flying vehicles. Let me remove those to show you something interesting. I think it was this tile. No, it was this one. Yeah, uh, you cannot fly over uh, this pi this tile because it has uh, pillars with uh, electricity cables, and you can see that it has both the airplane and the helicopter crossed out because they cannot fly across this tile, which again makes very very much uh, sense to be honest. So ending the game. The game ends in a victory for all players if all flame tokens are removed from all tiles, uh, thereby putting out the fire, and players lose the game immediately if eight or more tiles become scorched, or the fire camp, which is this tile, is scorched again. There is a complete uh, token list with all the tokens, reward tokens, so you don't have to remember anything and it's very very useful. And of course all the terrain tiles, as you can see, have uh, some special rules besides the icons that you can match, for example, uh, if you score the radio tower, then the crew boss loses their ability. Then uh, um, uh, another good one is, uh, for example, the, the propane tank. When you scorch the propane tank, uh, you add one flame token to all adjacent tiles that are not blocked by fire break, so it spreads the fire a lot. It's really, really bad. And uh, another interesting one is the fire cache. When scorched, this uh, icon, that's why you have the fire reward token. And you remove all reward tokens from the supply from the game and from now on players cannot gain tokens. So you can only keep what you had already in your possession. Okay, so you see the very, very pretty, straight, pretty much straightforward uh, uh, abilities. Uh, there are some alternative uh, rules for making the game less difficult. There are a lot of options actually, or more difficult, which is very, very interesting. And you also have a single player uh, rule set, a very, very uh, robust solitaire set. Essentially, very simple, you choose two characters, you will control both of them. On your turn, you may choose to play using either character, but you will only use one character each turn. And there is no limit to the number of reward tokens you may have. Any reward tokens you acquire are shared and may be used by either character. So there you have it. Now you know everything you need to know on how to play Hot Shots, the cooperative wildfire fighting game. So I had an extremely good time playing Hot Shots. It's one of those games that uh, I keep uh, pulling it out uh, again and again from uh, my library, putting it on the table, because uh, when I want to play something that is completely different thematic-wise from what I've used so far, uh, this game really ticks the box. Uh, from uh, the aesthetics point of view, how it looks on the table, from the way that it feels different each time you mix the tiles, you make different map setups, you use different characters with different abilities, and uh, even trying some diff different uh, um, levels to make it more difficult or more challenging, etc. feels different. It plays fast, it's very easy to explain, has a lot of uh, cool ideas, 
uh, like uh, rolling dice with uh, custom dice with uh, uh, icons that uh, resemble the fighting tools that the firefighters have in their possession and uh, essentially it gives you the idea that you're really uh, working towards succeeding the ultimate goal saving a forest from a devastating fire. I had a really pleasant time playing the game, uh, playing it both solo and multiplayer, and I really enjoyed uh, especially trying to organize, to optimize who is going to go where, when we're going to try to predict uh, the direction of the wind, if we remember all the other directions that the wind moved or what makes sense in order to make and place fire breaks in the course of um, uh, the fire and how it moves out so that we can predict and determine actually uh, uh, where it's going and we can uh, try to avoid specific uh, 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 tiles like the propane tank being blown out and uh, scorching uh, itself and you know spreading fire across or etc. Uh, but it, it has to do a bit about timing. You need to make the right decisions on the right time and then uh, it will pay off. So extremely well designed, simple, fun, very very interesting uh, regardless of the simplicity and uh, always delivers a real a genuine feeling on the theme, on the game itself and uh, pro provides essentially uh, lots of fun and uh, lots of uh, uh, cool memories and cool uh, you know, uh, gaming experience from the session. I really enjoyed it so I highly recommend it. It's one of those simple fast games that I think tick the box for family gamer plus casual gamer plus solo co-op whatever it's not difficult at all so i think uh, anyone can try it and uh, see what i'm talking about this is hot shots